God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this part of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. If you walk in through the valley, there are shadows all around. Do not fear He, He will guide you. He will keep you safe and sound. For He has promised to never leave you nor forsake you. And His Word is true. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. is good all the time he put a song of praise in this heart of mine god is good all the time through the darkest night his light will shine god is good god is good all the time oh, he is so good god is good God is good all the time. Amen. Well, good morning. Good morning. All right. We, uh, we got a few announcements, and uh, just so good to see you all this morning. Man, it was so nice outside. I wanted to sit in the deer stand, but, uh, you know, I figured it would be better to come here. Uh well, we have daylight savings time starting next Sunday, so don't forget to roll back your clocks, okay? Um, or forward, whichever way it is. Other than that, we'll be here. Time will be different, all right? Um, Wranglers, hey, if there's any Wranglers, y'all can go ahead and head on back and uh, jump into uh, the Wrangler. Uh, also, we will have no barrels and Bibles uh, due to the weather. Could be snowing, possibly. Uh, so I don't know that you'd want to ride in that today or then. Uh, <clears throat> play days today, uh, it's $20 to enter, right? Is it $20 to enter? Yeah, I think so. Um, but, man, we have got uh, tons of stuff we're giving away. It's going to be absolutely amazing. And uh, it's always such a blast. The arena is in, like, perfect form. Uh, so uh, have just enough water. It's great. T-shirts. They're going fast. Uh, they're back there on the table. We got from infant to infinity, all right? So uh, whatever size you need, all right? And uh, other than that, uh, the Lone Star uh, Wrangler um, uh, tour, I guess, I don't know what you call it, tour, day, fun in the day, pumpkin patch thing. The thing that's right down here on the side of the road, uh, that's next Sunday from 3 to 6, but you need to register, so... If you're going to send somebody, please grab a piece of paper like this uh, and register how many is coming with you so that way we can get all our tickets and get that taken care of. Um, <clears throat> other than that, we have another great announcement, uh, and that's that we have a baptism this Sunday. So 
Uh, I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring Mr. Nolan on up here, and uh, we're gonna baptize him. Woody, won't you come help us as well? Come on. He was there. Woody got to pray with him, and um, it was an awesome time. <clears throat> yeah, just hold that right here. It was great because we uh, we did fields of faith. Uh, if you didn't know, and uh, we had about 600 kids join us there at the city park, um, and uh, we had roughly. Uh, close to uh, 50 kids give their life to Jesus, um, and uh, man, it was just such an awesome time uh, to get to see God move in such a special way. So, once you jump on in here, it's warm. There you go. He's just itching to get in that water. I tell you what, <laughs> I'm telling you, it's like a bathtub. That thing makes it hot. <clears throat> well, Nolan, man, what an amazing day. Huh? What an exciting day. You told me you were nervous a minute ago. I would be too. And uh, what's that? I'm not going to hold you under too long. That's right. I know. <laughs> I, told him, I told him if you're more nervous, the longer I hold you under. But, uh, you know, just kidding with him. But we're just excited for you, excited for what God's going to do in you, <clears throat> and uh, excited for uh, you just being there with us on Wednesday night and getting to hang out with us so much. So we're just excited for that. So uh, knowing... Do you profess Jesus to be Lord? Yes, sir. Have you given your life to him? Yes, sir. To serve him? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Well, then it's in our honor and it's our privilege to get to baptize you, okay? We'll baptize you in the name, we'll put your hands over your, yep. We'll baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism and raised to walk in newness of life. Come on. Woo! Okay, walk right up here. <clears throat> That's our favorite spot. It's a favorite time because not only are you brand new, but you got a brand new family. So I'm going to ask your family to stand up. Come on. Yeah. And let's pray and uh, let's just commission him. Father, I thank you so much for Nolan. I thank you that you are going to continue to reveal yourself to him in the most amazing ways. And that he's going to see you and he's going to get to walk with you and that he's get you given him this brand new life to walk in. And so, Holy Spirit, would you just continue to move in his life? Would you continue to fill him? And uh, that he'd just be changed radically different and uh, serving you and loving you in everywhere he goes. We thank you. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Come on out. Every time I try to make it on my own Every time I try to stand and start to fall And all those lonely roads that I've traveled on There was Jesus When the life I built came crashing to the ground When the friends I had were nowhere to be found and I couldn't see it then, but I can see it now There was Jesus In the waiting, in the searching in the healing and the hurting like a blessing buried in the broken pieces every minute every moment where i've been and where i'm going even when i didn't know it or couldn't see it there was jesus For this man who needs amazing kind of grace For forgiveness at a price I couldn't pay I'm not perfect so I thank God every day There was Jesus There was Jesus In the waiting, in the searching 
in the healing and the hurting like a blessing buried in the broken pieces every minute every moment where i've been and where i'm going even when i didn't know it or couldn't see it there was jesus on the mountain and the valleys in the shadows of the alleys there was Jesus in the fire in the flood there was Jesus always is and always was no I never walk alone you're always there In the searching, in the healing and the hurting, like a blessing buried in the broken pieces. Every minute, every moment, where I've been and where I'm going, even when I didn't know it or couldn't see it, there was Jesus.
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give to us our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven thine is the kingdom thine is the power thine is the glory forever be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven my father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven on earth as on earth as it is in heaven. of lightning rolls of thunder blessing and honor strength and glory and power be to you the only wise king oh holy 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 is the lord god almighty who was and is and is to come with all creation i sing praise to the king of kings you are my everything and i will adore you
filled with wonder, awestruck wonder at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath and living water, such a marvelous mystery. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Holy, holy, holy. Is the Lord God Almighty? With all creation I sing, you are my everything, and I will adore you. Shout to the Lord all 
all the earth let us sing power and majesty praise to the king mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name i sing for joy at the work of your hands forever i love you forever i'll stand nothing compares to the promise i Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you that nothing compares. Nothing compares. Nothing compares. The moment that we look at you, the moment that we see you, everything else fades. Everything's got to bow its knee at you. When you're in the room, everything changes. When you're in my darkest situation, they turn around. When I'm on the mountaintop, you're right there beside us. Father, I think about how many people don't shout your name. I think about how many of them don't know you, never seen you. And you've given us the opportunity to show them. And I just pray that this morning we'd see you. We'd find courage in you. We'd find hope in you. We'd find healing in you. We'd find deliverance in you. We'd find salvation in you. Whatever we need today, we'd find it in you. So here we are, open up our hearts to you. Holy Spirit, would you have your way this morning? We're not here just to gather, we're here to meet you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Man, those songs are good. Well, this morning... We're going to talk about um, what true freedom really looks like and, um, and what Jesus has to offer when he really says, I have come that you may have life and life abundantly. And he also comes and says, wherever my spirit is, there is freedom. There is freedom. He, say, he says, I've set you free for freedom. But the question we have to ask ourselves is, well, then what bounds us up so much? What takes away our freedom? What resists freedom? And I believe, and, I, and, and I've seen this in my own life, and I've seen this enough now that it's religion versus relationship. You see, when you're religious, you just, buy, you just uphold practices. <clears throat> you uphold routines. You uphold certain things for the sake of the thing, for the sake of just doing it. And, and religion also wants to put you in a box to say this is religion. You see, it's no different from when Jesus walked the earth right? You had the Pharisees and the Sadducees who were very religious people. And they're serving God the best they knew how, but in, in the end of the day, they were very religious. Why? Because when Jesus began to walk through the crowd and somebody needed freedom, from what? Well, 
lots of them, blind eyes, crippled, bleeding for the rest of their life, a prostitute. The list goes on and on and on. And when Jesus would step in on a religious day called the Sabbath and heal somebody that needed real true freedom, the Pharisees tried to stop it. Pharisee says, whoa, 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 whoa. This is a religious day. This is, we don't do it on this day. But Jesus is like, don't you see? This man's never walked for 42 years and he's walking. And you're upset that it was on your day? Yeah, that's it. That's on our day. You can't do that. Ah, I guess you just don't get it yet. And then he'd go on and keep going. <clears throat> And he'd be sharing about the kingdom. And he'd be sharing about how there's going to be new life and there's new freedom that's coming. And he says, repent for the kingdom of God is near. And they would try and arrest him. <laughs> like he's bringing freedom. He's bringing joy. He's bringing true life-changing, life-altering freedom. But religious wants to put it in a box. <clears throat> religious wants to hold it down. <clears throat> I also think about what's, what's really going on in holding someone captive. And over the last week and a half, <clears throat> I've seen this face to face. <clears throat> Can somebody bring me a glass of water? I don't know why I've got a frog in my throat, but I just need a glass of water. But I've seen this face-to-face -face of where Satan wants to hold people literally captive, right? We read about demon-possessed people in the Bible, but we don't think it exists today. <laughs> Sad story, it does. And I've looked in the eyes of five women in the last week and a half that have literally been under the oppression of the devil and some possessed. And I, I was just sitting there enjoying my evening. I just cooked a nice 16-ounce ribeye steak over a nice wood fire. I was enjoying a good meal. I love a steak. Thank you so much, Dusty. <clears throat> I love eating steak. And all of a sudden, my phone rings. And it's a friend of mine, and he says, hey, I'm out of town, but some of my crew, some of my leaders are dealing with a girl that is dealing with demons. They need help. He said, Can you, would you just, could you help them? And I said, of course, while I'm alive. <laughs> I said, where are they at? He said, well, they gave me their, gave me, he gave them, the, gave them my phone number. They called me, and they said, here's where we are. And so I just went straight there. And I show up. And sure enough, this girl is struggling in a real way. And it's not pretty. But Jesus shows up. <laughs> Jesus offers freedom. And she becomes completely free. Returns back to her sound mind. And the peace of God just comes and dwells in that house. It's nothing I did other than I just followed his voice. And I just, he, just, he told me what to do. <laughs> That's when you just get into yes sir mode. You just say yes sir a bunch. And he does the work. And then I go on and <clears throat> I put on a conference out in East Texas for a bunch of young adults. And I'm there doing the conference and all of a sudden... There's this girl that comes up and just shares how she had dealt with lots of things that are holding her oppressed. And she starts naming it. And she says, I've just been dealing with this since I was 16 years old. And I need freedom. And she's just crying out. And so I just gathered the girls up that were there. And I said, okay, you girls, you know what to do. It's time for you to pray. This young lady needs freedom. And that's what we're here for. We're here for freedom. We're not here for a meeting. I'm not even going to preach right now. You're going to pray, and she needs freedom. And they did. 
And she breaks free, literally breaks free of everything that the devil's trying to hold over her. And so I get back up on stage and I'm getting ready to preach my sermon because that's what a preacher does. I got a good sermon I've prepared. I've got a good message. <laughs> Until the father says, get back down. There's more girls that need freedom. Yes, sir. You get back in that mode again. <laughs> All right. This is not my normal second session of a conference, okay? I get back down and I just said, I'm just supposed to ask. I know there's more of you in here that need freedom from what she just said and what she just dealt with. Who is it? And three girls jump up and run down to the front. And God moves in freedom again. You see, I tell people all the time, you can come and listen to great messages, but it's much different when you look him in the eyes. A message should just draw you to him. The only reason I share these testimonies is to tell you there's freedom offered today. There's freedom offered now. At any moment and at any time. When he looks at you, there's freedom. I mean, I've had stories when I was in Houston of I'd be praying for these Muslims and I'd be praying for these Hindus. And we'd be talking and having conversations. And I'll never forget, there's one girl in particular that just, she came from overseas, had no, no reference to Jesus whatsoever. And I just kept telling her, I said, you know what? I said, just seek him with all your heart. I promise he'll show up to you. I said, I'm not going to convince you anything, but he'll show up. And sure enough, about a week later, I think it was, or so, give or so, it wasn't long, all of a sudden, she comes down to where we are, finds us, and she said, I was in my dorm room last night, and a man in all white showed up and said, I am he. I said, who do you think that is? Huh? I said, that's him. And I said, he loves you. And I said, and today you get to make a choice if you want to serve him now. You want to give your life to him now. And she did. And so I, I, I just want to be clear. Gathering in a building does not bring freedom. <laughs> Gathering around the one who are the reason that we're in the building is what brings freedom. It says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. But you know where the spirit of the Lord is? Right there. So freedom is offered at any moment, at any time. That's why Jesus walked around and he said the kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is now. Freedom's right here. And constantly the religious leaders wanted to stop that freedom. And they wanted to cancel it. It says right here. In John 8, 3 through 11. I'm going to set this scene up. It says, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In Moses' law, it commands us to stone such a woman. Now, what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a bias for accusing him. You see, religion just wants to accuse you of something. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let any one of you who is without sin be the first one to throw a stone at her. You know what religion also does? It points a lot. But as you were taught as a little kid, if there's one going forward, there's three coming back. We don't need to point, we don't need to accuse. Again, he stooped down, wrote on the ground, and at this, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the oldest first, until Jesus was left with the woman standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, 
Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No, sir, she said. Then neither do I. Jesus declared, now go and leave your life of sin. You know what's beautiful about what Jesus does in that moment? You know, I was taught when I worked with kids all the time, you get down on a knee and you look them in the eyes. Why? Because just standing up over a child, you intimidate them. Period. But when you get down on your knees and you look them in the eyes, you're saying, I'm not here to intimidate. I'm not here to do something to authoritative to be over you. I'm here to look you eye to eye and to be on your level. And I believe that's what Jesus was doing in that moment. He got down on his knees. He humbled himself, drew in the sand for a little bit. And then he stood back up when she was all alone. And he looked her in the eyes coming from down to up, not up to down. And he said, I can imagine. Can you just imagine? Just take yourself to that moment. Actually, you know what? Charity, I'm going to play you a scene from, from the movie Out of the Chosen. And this is the woman, this is Mary Magdalene, that they said that she was an adulterous woman. Uh, and she's there and doesn't know this is Jesus. And Jesus looks at her and basically says, he's in the bar with her and he goes, you don't need the drink. And she's like, get away from me. And she's running out the door and Jesus is walking behind her. She doesn't know it's him. And this is what happens. Mary. Mary of Magdala. Thus says the Lord who created you, and he who formed you. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You. her in the eyes and he calls her by name when you watch the whole scene that 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 scene that's that's that lead up to that is so powerful because early on before Nicodemus the religious leader of the day is they're just trying to portray it in the movie this way comes in and tries to free her of her demons and the demons basically say you have no power over us you religious leaders have no power and then Jesus, and in one moment, grabs her and just says her name and looks at her, and she's free. And the next day in the movie, she's walking around bright and new, and people could tell she's so different. And that's why we're here. We're here, number one, is either you've met with him, you know him, you've experienced him. And that's why you come to this building, and that's why you meet here and gather to hear about him to learn, to grow, or you're searching, you're seeking. Or maybe today is the first day that you're really getting to see him for the first time. I don't know. But religion loves to control. Religion loves to bring fear, intimidation, make you abide by rules, do's and don'ts. Relationship is full of love. Freedom, joy, creativity. It empowers you to be you. It says it this way in Galatians 4, 1 through 11. 
He says, what am I saying? What I am saying is that as long as an heir is underage, he is no different from a slave. Although he owns the whole estate, the heir is subject to guardians and trustees until the time is set by his father. So also when we are underage, we are in slavery under the elemental, elemental spiritual forces of the world. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who cries out, Abba, Father. So you're no, lo <clears throat> you're no longer a slave, but, a, a, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you an heir. Formerly, you did not know God. You were slaves to those who by nature are not God's. But now that you know God, or rather, I love this part. It says, or rather, are known by God. How is it that you are turning back to those weak and miserable forces? Do you wish to be enslaved by them all over again? You are observing special days and months and seasons and years. I fear for you that I have somehow wasted my efforts. Do you hear what he's saying? Can you hear how he's saying that religion can enslave you? Patterns and rituals and things and, and just upholding things can enslave you? If it's not about the one that they're all about, if it's not focusing your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning the shame, and are set down at the right hand of the throne of the Father, like if it doesn't draw you up to him, <clears throat> I think COVID's done a really great thing for the church. It's made us ask the real question, why am I even going? You can watch 500 churches online, a lot better preachers than this guy. You can listen to whoever you want. You listen to the funny one, listen to the serious one, listen to the screamer, listen to what, I mean, <laughs> whatever you want, you listen to it online. Or if the reason that you're coming to church has nothing to do with this guy up here and it has everything to do with the guy up there. And all of a sudden, your perspective is being changed. It's being shifted. And going, I have, I'm actually coming here to bring something to the table. I'm actually coming that God would use you at this service. Because guess what? There's somebody walking through the door that needs you to stand up and use the voice that you have. It's like I started from very early on when I talked about Nehemiah rebuilding the wall. Where did they all rebuild the wall? In front of their own houses. Where are you building life? In front of your own life. And in this body and in this church, we need every single one of us to play the game. Nobody needs to be on the sideline. Because we all have what it takes and we have what we need. It says it in the Bible. It says he's given you everything you need for life and godliness. You've got the spirit of the living God living inside of you. And he will use you. It's just like when I showed up to that girl's house and there was four other girls there <clears throat> praying with her. And I looked at all of them and I said, all right, guys, this is your turn. <laughs> I said, I'm not coming here to save the day. I'm coming here to empower you to do the change. Because I got to walk out of here knowing that you girls could do the same thing if, I were to, if you were to get another phone call for someone else. You don't need me. Best preachers work themselves out of a job. That's the way it is. That's what Jesus did all the time. He just got 12 and went on and preached the gospel and raised them up. Paul did it all the time. Why do you think he wrote so many letters? He was writing to all the churches he started and then moved on. <laughs> We're supposed to raise up and equip and empower. And that's what it's all about. It's real freedom brings real change that leads unto real transformation. I think our church needs real freedom. I think our city needs real freedom. And I think our nation needs real freedom. That'll only bring real transformation. Policies will never transform a nation. Only Jesus can do that. Policies are great. I'm not saying they're bad. 
But you can put policies in front of a murderer all day long, he'll still murder. Why do we have prisons full? We have lots of policies. But when you meet Jesus, just like the demoniac did when Jesus got off the boat, he was a strong man, it said. And Jesus offers freedom to him. And you know what that guy went and did? Well, just go read the Bible. He brought change to a whole city. He began to preach the gospel. And they were like, hey, this guy's got his right mind. This guy's actually free. What about the woman at the well? Huh? She'd been sleeping with guys all over town. Everybody knew who she was. He said, come meet a man that knew everything. She said, come meet a man who knew everything about me. But he gave me freedom. I have freedom in him. <clears throat> so my question is, what part of your life is either bound by just religious activity or anything you can name that doesn't give you freedom? Because he says, I offer you freedom today from it. I have to do this all the time. I got to go, Lord, I'm just bound up in this area. I need some freedom. You know? I mean, it's just the way we got to live. We just got to live open-hearted and open-handed. It's so easy to grab a hold of anything, you name it, whatever it is. And all of a sudden, that becomes your identity or that becomes your thought process. You start thinking it long enough, it'll change your life. So what thought process is, Lord, I just lay it before you. Would you help me? Would you bring freedom? We need it so badly. And he's so faithful to deliver every single day time every single time so let's pray father you know every person sitting in every seat and you know what freedom they need and you look on them with the eyes of love the eyes of a gracious father like you looked on every story I just talked about you loved every one of them. You met them right where they are. Just like you're going to meet whoever it is today right where they are. And if you're sitting in here and you're sitting there thinking to yourself, man, you're talking to me, you're talking to me, then that's the Lord looking at you just saying, I'm right here, I'm right now. Just reach out, grab my hand, and take the freedom. All you have to do is say, I don't want it anymore. And I need you. I don't want it anymore. I just need you. And he'll bring it. So Father, I thank you right now that you begin to bring freedom from this moment forward to those that are asking. That new life would come, new joy would come. The spirit of depression and fear and suicide and anything else would just not have its hold, not have its grip anymore. And there'd be real freedom today. Jesus, would you empower us to live a life different? Would you empower us to walk different today? Would you give us courage? Would you give us boldness? Because we love you. We so love you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a good rest of your Sunday.